the gospel according to John chapter 11. <sighs> that chapter 9 was like the worst story so far in the whole Bible. It was just terrible. So two days later, chapter 11, now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister, Martha. It was that Mary, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Oh. It was like Mary Magdalene. And they have a place there still. It's called Magdala, right? Okay, therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Now when he had heard, so he knew them, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. This is where all these people are just trying to kill him, probably, right? His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. And goest thou thither again? Oh, wow. He's got a lot of guts. Whew. That's great. Um, so in Matthew, when, pe when, it's, when he says, I came to save the lost sheep of Israel. Um, well, this is the lost sheep of Israel. These people trying to stone him. They don't seem so lost to me. It's Judea, right? This is the center of... I'm trying to look and see back in 9. This horrible chapter of all chapters. Um, go to the pool at Saloa. It was a Sabbath day. Okay, anyway. Obviously, he's in Judea. I was just trying to check. That's something to recheck. Recheck. Judea. Okay. So now he's going back to where they just tried to stone him twice. It wasn't once, it was twice. On two separate occasions. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeketh the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them. I don't know how that's going to stop him from getting stoned, but. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. I don't know, he's basically telling people don't go out at night, and basically, it's kind of true, like, why do you need to go out at night? You learn that quick around here. For the past five years, you cannot go out past, like, six, seven o'clock. It is not a good idea. It's a suicide factory over here. It's not a fentanyl problem. It is a suicide factory. They're getting paid hand over fist. I'm sure every time the fire is called... It's like a five thousand dollar thing. The feds pay the city, it does because no these people aren't paying them. They don't have any money, so it's like hand over fist. It's like it's a win win situation for the city, um, you know, sacrificing these poor souls and getting paid for it. So yeah, if you walk outside like seven, it it's it's an all day all night thing, but you know, at night it's just. Well, I don't know, because I don't go out at night. Unless I have to. So, yeah, I agree. He says, he says, 
But if the man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there's no light in him. Like, why are you even going out at night? In any case, right, everybody should be asleep, right? Like, a normal, in normal circumstances, most days of the year. Like, unless, I don't know, you're moving or something. Why? And you have to get up early in the morning, you know, and start work. Okay. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Wait, I better go back to 11. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go into him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. What? What, what is wrong with him? Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Oh, gross. Now, Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha, and Martha to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Oh, you know what? Is this Mary Magdalene or Mary the mother? Mary and her sister Martha. Oh my gosh, you guys. Yeah, no, it's Mary Magdalene. It's not Elizabeth. I got confused there for a second. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's okay though. She means I'm paying attention. You can't know everything all at once, okay? And said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and calleth for thee. And as, as soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her, in, her, in the house, uh-oh, and comforted her, when they saw Mary that she arose hastily and went out, followed her, uh-oh, saying, She goeth into the grave to weep there, uh-oh. That's not where she's going. Then, when Mary was come where, where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. 
Uh oh, that phrase, come and see, come and see. It's, that's what they, it's so many times in Revelations, that phrase, right? Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold now, behold how he loved him. There's some good Jews there, guys. And some of them said, could not this man which opened the eye of the blind, the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. Oh my gosh. What's oh, no, Don't get me started. There's some people are saying, oh, he loved him. And some are saying worse than the opposite. They're saying, well, why didn't, if he, he healed that blind guy, why didn't he heal this guy before he died? That's exactly what they're saying, right? Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Uh-oh, doesn't that sound familiar? That's like where Joseph of Arimathea gave him that brand new cave. Okay. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man, where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, thee that thou hast heard me, and I know, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! Uh oh. And he that was a dead man came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothing. Jesus saith unto thee, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the thing, and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees, and told them what things Jesus had done. Oh no, here we go. I really am starting. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. What? They told him, you, it is good for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Oh. He's just reinforcing it. He's like making it. Okay. The Pharisees are saying if we leave if we if we do not stop this right now, all the people are all like all people all you know, our lying, pharisaical people that we're trying to, we're the Pharisees, we're controlling this group. If we allow him to live and these people keep reporting all of these things, they are believing on him 
and the Romans, they're, they're going to kill him and um, they're, they're going to get rid of us, right? And this guy Caiaphas says, he points out, right, this evil guy, Caiaphas, He's the high priest that year. So he's the only one that can go into, it's once a year, right? And is it on the atonement that he goes into the temple for? Um, I don't know. Are they still sacri are they sacrificing things at this point still? I doubt it. I don't know. I don't think so. It doesn't say so far, but he, this is the boss. He's doing something once a year. He's special to himself and to everybody and not in a good way like it's supposed to be. But Caiaphas says, oh no, it's, it's better for us that we're, this guy is going to die and we'll be left alone. We'll, we'll just take it out on this guy, right? We're not going to kill him. We're not going to allow this to happen. We're not going to allow him to spread this all. We're not even going to get it to that point. The quickest thing to do is get rid of him. Right? Not consider that it is expedient for us. The quickest thing, right? That one guy should die. And the whole nation does not. Right? So this is the head priest correcting him, right? So these Pharisees are saying, are we, if we let him alone, then all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away our place and nation. They're only worried about themselves. They aren't even worried about the damn people. That's really bad news. This is, they are so, um, what's that word? Narcissistic. Narcissist. So, the Pharisees, the basic Pharisee are saying, you know what? They don't even care about the people, right? That they're supposed to be leading. These are the shepherds, right? And they show it right here. They're like, you know what? They're going to take away our place and nation, right? If, if this guy continues, right? And then this head priest, Caiaphas, right? He's like, no. The quickest thing, he's like, you're stupid. You know nothing at all. You're stupid. Um, the quickest thing is we're going to take him out. And then nothing will happen to anybody. Duh. Oh, my gosh. So there, it's just evilness, right? They're both evil. The, the Pharisees is actually more evil, what they're saying, because they're like, you know what? They only want to protect themselves. They're saying their nation, but they just mean the, the, the priests. They don't mean any of the people. They don't even care. They kill everybody. In this spake he, not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Well, that did happen. You have to be so smart. It's not really a prophecy. He's going around healing people. You see what you're going to do to him. You're going to go kill him. So it's not really a prophecy. It's something like you're, you've effectively, you're just doing yourself. It was not a prophecy of God to go kill him. That's for damn sure. It is not a prophecy. And I'm almost done. Not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. Why? So you can boss them around more? Yep, so you could boss them around more, probably. 
Then, from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Yep. Very bad. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness. Into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. Right? That's named after um, Joseph's two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And is there a picture in here of this? Okay, I just gotta get, hurry up. Before it cuts off, I'll look for a picture at the end. And there continued with his disciples, and the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Purify themselves. Oh, what? Premeditated murder? Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he was, he should shoe it that they might take him. So this Caiaphas. He's the chief priest. Um, where's Ephraim? How far is it from Jerusalem? Ephraim, Ephraim. Ephraim. Jerusalem. I don't know, here. It's not a good map. It's useless. Look at that. Useless. But you know what? Look at this chapter 9. Look at what happened. I got so freaked out. They're so evil. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's the end of chapter 7. Um, but yeah. Uh, every Bible should have a lot more pictures be a lot better. Maybe in the future, there's like, they can like 3D it, so like every page has a picture, has some pictures or something. I don't know, God would want that, no, never mind. But, um, trying to find a location in the 12 tribes, obviously it's not in here, but is Ephraim, it's very near Jerusalem. Near Judea, where the near where Judah, right? Because Judah has Jerusalem. It's near there. It's not like so far north, right? Ephraim and Manasseh tribes. So it's pretty close, I guess, somewhere. Um, 